Hello, this is Christina Wallace and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, this is where I upload regular videos on how to make flowers with your own hands out of old porcelain and occasionally sugar. So today I'm going to be making this white rose, um, actually out of sugar for a change, and I've promised to make it for a couple of weeks, so here it is. But before we get into it, I have an exciting announcement to make. And uh, those of you who've been following me on social media would probably know what it is. Yes, I have decided to start selling veiners. And um, this veiners I've been making for myself and my students over the, over the last few years out of uh, petals and leaves as seasons came. If you want to purchase this rose, Vena that is used for creation of this rose. There is a PayPal link below that includes a postage and all the rest of it. So if you press on it, that will just lead you through and I will post it to you within a week or so. If you are from Europe, please email me. The email is below as well and I will send you PayPal link with the ad adjusted postage. And um, yeah, Europe and UK, this is where I'm starting and let's see how this whole thing is going to unfold. And I'm going to be adding new veiners on this channel like every couple of weeks. And Instagram is a good place as well. Please do follow me on Instagram if you're interested in the whole vein thing, malaki. And um, yeah, let's get started. Let's get stuck into it and see what happens to our rest. For this particular type of flower, it's very important to have a large ball and so not to make it too heavy, I'm going to use very light celluloid clay. It's uh, the one by FMM that I'm using but also you could use Artista or anything else or you could make um, a ball out of, or rather buy a ball out of polystyrene uh, I'm going to link up a tutorial on how to make one of those. That one you don't have to dry overnight, you could just um, make one and go. As it goes, I haven't, not only I haven't dried this particular ball well, I haven't dried it at all and I was kind of hoping to wing it and of course it was giving me absolute grief throughout. Here we go, it's your sizing. Uh, it's the size of a small apple basically. And um, yeah, it was giving me grief throughout and eventually fell off the wire or horror. But this would give me an opportunity to show you how to fix it if uh, it does happen to you. Okay, so this is the extension to place on top of your ball. The total height of this and the ball needs to be just under the total height of your vena because otherwise your vein is just not going to be enough to finish off your rose. So this little thin nose is purposely thin. It's to help us to keep the flower nice hourglass shape. And now we need to have loads of these little balls, um, as many as you want petals, plus some spares, to just make freehand petals. Uh, petals like this are very casual in their shape. You just need to keep them the right size. Uh, but they're quicker to make freehand since we don't really care what shape they are. And um, yeah, I'm using sugar glue. It's gloopier and dries slower, unlike the um, egg white. Just something to bear in mind. And I've used seven petals. So seven little balls of the same size turn into seven little petals fairly quickly. And now I'm just tying them over this little thin nose. Um, I kind of do it in a spiral fashion, you don't have to, I just find it's easier than to, to manipulate them at the end because when I roughly attach them to the ball then I kind of have a little fiddle with my flower shaping tool just to make sure that they look nice and spaced out nicely whatever and then I let them, let them settle and dry partially at least. So now we're done with small size, we're going to cut and vein the only other size of petals for this rose. I'm going to use a generic cutter by lovely Rebecca Stevens, aka the Crafty Cutter Lady. Her cutters are really, really, really amazing. They're good quality, a good value. And I'm going to partner with her for custom cutters for many of my veiners. 
in the future so you will probably see a lot of her cutters in the time to come and if you do need some uh, custom cutters of your own she is the girl to go to and so yes so I've chosen the cutter that would fit the size of my vena and now I'm going to proceed with um, larger petals the only other size and as you can see I leave the middle a little bit thicker we will not be veining our petals this time because veining is not actually required in a close set petals rows like this but I do still like to leave the bottom a little bit thicker because that would allow me to stretch the petals um, and that would also help with um, nicer veining which we would need for this rose because uh, veining is kind of a key feature of it that you kind of see a lot of the back side of the of the petals for the lack of a better word okay so now I'm going to thin the edges if you're new to flower making listen up uh, the large ball tool needs to go over the edge about half in half out to thin the petals as opposed to uh, curl your petal in and I'm using um, Simply Heaven sugar paste which sometimes frays a little bit, it's a fantastic sugar paste, it's a fantastic price and that's it's almost the only downside really, I might run a feature on it. Anyway, so you store that for a bit and in the meanwhile you've got your vein petal that was drying up and taking a little bit of a shape by itself. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So here as you can see I'm thinning the edges of my petal with my fingers, that really does help the natural look of it, but if you have more than one rose to make it could get quite painful. Now I often uh, secure petals with a bit of, with adding a bit of petal base to the veiner, but this uh, petal, uh, this veiner that I've made this uh, 3D is quite deep, so you generally wouldn't have that problem, but yes. And also very good definition, very lucky petal that I found to take an impression with, and you see it has this nice curve which I'm really really happy with and I hope those of you who do end up buying and using uh, this vein uh, would be happy with as well and here I'm letting a little bit of air in so that uh, the petal could dry in its shape because otherwise if I was to curve it later the texture would probably go Beware though, it could be quite tempting to over dry these petals and it's not like they would break but they stop being pliable so if you have to put some petals over them they would go through and uh, you would see these ugly edges. Here we go, that's how it looks when it comes out. You need fresh paste really to make it out of and make it textuous. So this is what we do to make texture even better. With some veiners is a good trick for the closed rows when you don't see the inside of the veiner. And here we go, we're about to apply our first of uh, the 13 petals that I'm going to, no, 16, 16 petals that I'm going to apply. And as you can see from the word go, it has a little curve. This is the vein that it is. It offers you a very natural looking curve as, a, you know, just to make a difference from the usual curling that we do with toothpick which is also great but it's just something um, different looking but the downside of it is obviously uh, if you want to straighten this curve then um, it's it doesn't straighten up very naturally it kind of just sits there so yeah it would work with a particular look of a rose when you have that opened up look um, and it could work if you really like that look then it would work as your main veiner Otherwise, yeah, it's just an alternative vein with um, uh, good qualities that it has. I mean, give me a shout what kind of a vein is, rose vein is in, and in general, you actually like to use, would like to use and would like to see and um, feel that I'm missing from the UK market at the moment. So, here we go. So, we don't apply them, these petals, parallel we kind of just overlap them and um, look at them and see what looks right uh, 16 petals is a number that I've used you could use less petals you could keep them very snug throughout or you could kind of start 
making them spacing them away from the main body but in that case you would um, sooner than later you lose that particular shape Now somewhere about here my wire has fallen out of my flower or short chorus. I'm going to show you what to do in this case and you decide by yourself whether you want to use super glue or not. You could use domestic glue, it'll just take longer. But since we're using clay there and you're not, you know, not really supposed to eat um, sugar, let alone clay in flowers, you know, decide, decide by yourself, but that's what I do, just add a bit of super glue, and jobs are good, and in seconds, it doesn't move, it stays in place, and by the way, I really recommend super glue with this little brush, if you don't care much for your own fingers, getting super glued, and when you get to about 10 petals, you need to start planning swift exits, so you need to plan ahead, if you want your rose to be, to continue being shapely you need to make your ball probably a bit larger for this kind of a vena and um, wrap your petals um, tighter if you like this straight shape that I do then you just um, plan your last three or four or sometimes even five petals um, uh, I cut them down just that little bit uh, to neutralize the frill of the folds that keep coming out so I didn't want it to be uh, straight and then really opened up at the top so if I um, have this going on shorter and less curled petals just surrounding the outside of the rose then they would kind of give me the look that I wanted and um, also watch your veins be particularly careful and precise with your veining because obviously the last few veins would be the ones that everyone would see and the ones you could add a bit of tint to to emphasize them etc etc mm -hmm.